Good morning, everyone. Those who are at home on live stream, welcome. I'll call the uh, Bruce County Museum Committee uh, meeting for April the 5th, 2018, to order. Uh, regular chairman is uh, not able to be here just yet, so I'll fill in for a while. And the first item uh, on the agenda, I need to remind everyone, it's our own responsibility to close any pecuniary interest that you may have on today's agenda. And hearing none, uh, one action item today. And Kathy, if you 2A about collections, and uh, we'll let you take us through that, please. Thank you. Warden. So uh, the action item before you is uh, an item that you're uh, all familiar with because we've brought this before you in the past. So it's a deaccessioning a request uh, to deaccession some items out of the collection. And you'll see on the list attached that uh, it's the number of uh, clothing pieces and uh, the method of destruction or disposal is on listed as well. So the recommendation, you want me to read the recommendation? Uh, the recommendation is that the list of items to be deaccessioned from the Bruce County Museum and Cultural Center's collection dated April 2018 be approved. You've heard the motion, and I have a mover and a seconder for the motion. Moved by Dave, seconded by Ann. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay, so we have a number of information items for uh, for council today. Um, again, our business and sponsorship report. Uh, we have some new pending uh, sponsorships and some approved. Uh, what's noteworthy in this report is that 80, we're at 82 percent of our asks for 2018 in terms of sponsorship at this point in the year. Uh, we still have our targeted revenue grants at uh, 12 percent of funding. We're still waiting on some grants, uh, but also within this uh, report, the student funding through YCW. We just received received um, word this week and um, it's quite unusual for us to get all four like every application that we've applied for um, in this particular case with YCW we've received funding for all four positions that we asked for um, and this particular <coughs> grant is a 75% funding which is is terrific news for us so we're quite pleased that we were able to get uh, all of that funding and then of course we have some other requests that are out in terms of um, uh, exhibition uh, work for the um, uh, traveling portion for the summer exhibit as well as the riding the rails and then of course uh, an exhibition that's coming up in the fall time frame. The next item that we have for information is just a letter that came back from our new Minister of uh, Tourism, Culture and Sport. Diane Verniel was named Minister not that long ago. So I did reach out to her uh, with um, uh, congratulating her on her appointment and she uh, just sent some correspondence back. It's also noteworthy that uh, Diane is also a summer resident um, in Sogging Shores. So she is quite familiar with Bruce County Museum and Cultural Center and we hope that uh, she will be spending some more time with us over the summer months as well. The education report, uh, similar to the public speaking, I had the opportunity to uh, actually uh, adjudicate Chelby, who is here with us this morning. Uh, but we held our seventh annual uh, Heritage Fair for GC Houston students. There were a number of winners. And of course, uh, there's a picture of one of the winners who will be moving on to the regional uh, fair that's being held at Grey Roots in April coming up and just to kind of a quick recap on our March break summer uh, March break kids camp rather um, we had a full house so every single day we were sold out uh, we had people on waiting lists so the camps are again uh, proving to be ever popular and there's just some of the campers having some fun and a number of the opportunities and events that are coming up in children's programming over the next little while. The next, uh, what we have is our marketing report. So you'll see in this report, we're still doing a quite a great deal of community outreach. Uh, our marketing coordinator has been out in the community uh, with the Sogging Shores Leisure Fair and is planning the upcoming events uh, over the next few months. We've also reached out in a marketing opportunity with, it's called, the program's called the International Student Identity Card. Uh, so this card is for international students. Uh, the students pay a fee to take out the card it's a minimal fee and then participants in the program are asked to come up with specific discount programs for these students so we've joined on to this and this is again just another uh, another uh, kind of program that we have in our portfolio to be able to offer access and and much more accessibility to the program uh, to the museum and the programs that we offer so again we have the cultural access pass we have the um, Bruce County Museum Explorer pass through the library we have the Ontario uh, College teachers card we have the PAL card and now 
know we have the ISIS, uh, ICIC card, ISIC card rather. Um, so again, just uh, trying to make accessibility for people in a variety of different ways. I did hand out again to Council, you should have already received, but just another copy. We're very excited to be opening uh, our Hallmarks of Humanity exhibit, which will open this Saturday. Uh, so this exhibition, it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, David and Maxine Marsh, who are out of um, London, England, contacted us over a year ago, and they have a quilt uh, from called Rose Township. So we got into conversations with uh, the Marshes, and uh, Maxine does quite a bit of speaking. Uh, her focus is on uh, mainly uh, World War I and World War II quilts, and in the Red Cross. So we've managed to bring the quilt <coughs> over. Uh, Maxine and David will be at the opening on Saturday. Maxine will also give a presentation, and uh, it's just a, you know, we never know sometimes where, uh, where the ideas come from or who reaches us, but um, it was great to have them reach out and for us to be able to pull this exhibition together so I hope that you can be in attendance this weekend. And then the last item that we have is our programming. And again, there's just a little snippet of our, ma our March Family <coughs> Fun Days. So this was generic programming and, and also registered programming for families. We had over 649 people at the museum through the course of March break. Something new every day uh, and um, all kinds of classes and interpretation as well as the exhibits for people. And then, of course, some of our up to upcoming programs uh, coming up. Our Medieval Day is the next big one for us in uh, April 21st, and that's in conjunction with the uh, Ancient Civilizations programming, the school programming that is ongoing right now at the museum over the months of April and a bit into May as well. And that is the museum's report. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Questions or comments on there were a lot of exciting material there in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the quilt coming from Colross. It's it's coming. It's from London, so it was from Colross. They have it, and we've had it shipped over, and it's hanging in the gallery. So Colross Township in Bruce County. Mm -hmm. And I got all the way to London, well, London, the, England. Well, most of these quilts, if you, the, the, the theme of the exhibition is called Hallmarks, Hallmarks of Humanity. So when you take a look at the quilt, I mean, quilts were made for comfort and care, but the bigger side of that was during uh, the war times, during home front, people were making signature quilts. They were doing them for fundraisers, and then, of course, they were sending them overseas for care. So many of the quilts uh, that were made in Canada or elsewhere are elsewhere in the country. So it's kind of nice. Uh, we were able at this point to bring um, items out of our own collection. We ha will of course have this quilt. And then we also reached out to the Teeswater Guild, the Five Star Teeswater Guild. Um, and they still continue, this guild still continues to make quilts um, <coughs> in care for Ronald McDonald House as an example. So the continuation of the, um, of the concept of quilts for care and for humanity is still very much uh, in today's society. So it's a very interesting exhibit. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Saturday, well, two, two o'clock Saturday. Yeah. Shall I mark you down? I wouldn't mark me down, but I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. So that was good. information items. Mm -hmm. We're good. And the next meeting is May the 3rd. And if there's nothing further at this time, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. And that's by Ann and Milt. All those in favor to adjourn, we're adjourned. Thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you. Keep up the good work.